and then the running back position. This one is going to be it's going to be an interesting group for me because um, I think we're going to see a, a ton of shakeup here. Um, obviously, we saw James Cook really emerge this year. He was absolutely tremendous, super fun to watch. Um, the only other guy under contract right now is Naheem Hines. Obviously missed all of last year with the knee injury from free jet ski accident. I think he's got a very interesting situation here because I, I do see a path that he could make the roster, um, but he's carrying a pretty hefty price tag and something there would have to change for me. Now, what I do find interesting here is for as awesome as James Cook was this year, the biggest the biggest thing that I saw out of him that's concerning is, you know, he had three, four drops that would have been like walk-in touchdowns, um, some of them in bigger moments than others. Um, what did we originally bring Hines in for and never really use him for? Being a pass-catching back. Um, so I, I think the path to the roster for me, since he would kind of have such a specialized role on offense we we saw James Cook kind of have the ability to be this you know bell cow back for what our system looks like um, but I think there is a path to the roster for Hines in that we had Deontay Hardy um, in charge of return duties this year and he kind of has a similar situation to Hines where I think he was effective on special teams but didn't really provide much on the on the offensive side of the ball, and he also has a pretty decent sized contract um, that we can get out of pretty pretty easily. Um, so we'll get into that more as we move into the receivers. But for me, I'm okay with one of them staying. I honestly don't really care which. I think they were both electric in the special teams. Um, but I don't see a path to keeping both of those guys on the roster. Um, and then guys that were on the team and are now free agents, we had Latavius Murray, um, had Damian Harris. We never really got to see much of this year. Obviously had a, a pretty scary looking injury. Um, and then we had Leonard Fournette stop by for a cup of coffee and um, somebody that was signed to a futures deal, he was here in the preseason, was Darrington Evans. And, and he's a guy that I'm excited to have on the practice squad. Um, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's like the next answer on the 53 man roster. I would have interest in bringing back Ty Johnson. Um, I thought he played really well in moments this year. And he's a dude I was really excited to to add I was kind of surprised that the Jets just kind of let him walk and you know their their move was to replace him with Delvin Cook who never really got any run and you know I know they kind of had a loaded room with Reese Hall and Michael Carter was there and kind of a numbers game but I always kind of liked Ty Johnson when he was with the Jets playing against the Bills and I was excited to bring him in uh, it kind of took him him a while to get opportunities on this team, but when he did, I thought he ran super hard. You know, a very different style running back than than James Cook is, but I thought he did a good job catching some passes. I thought he was a really effective runner in spots, and you know, looking at some stat sheets, you're not gonna you know, he's not setting any records. Um, but I thought the usage that we got from him, he was a very valuable pickup. Um, as far as some of the other guys go, like I said, I, I would love to have Ty Johnson back at the right number. Um, I don't think he's going to be demanding any huge contracts out there. Um, so I would love to see him back in the building. Um, Latavius Murray was tremendous for about half a season. Um, towards the end of the season, you could tell he was, it looked like he was running out of juice. He also had some drop passes. Um, he was a super fun story for a while. And I think down the stretch kind of showed it, it's, it's a spot where we can improve. 
Um, and then Damian Harris, I hate to say it because I, I was significantly more excited about him coming into the building than Murray. Um, and, you know, the way that his season ended for him, you know, hate to see a guy kind of fall out of favor with the team in that way. Um, I was really excited for him coming in, but my concerns were he had an injury history. Um, of course, this was a very different injury than, you know, some of his previous injury history. Um, unfortunately, on, on a one-year deal, we didn't really get to see what he had uh, had to offer very much. And when he was playing in healthy, he was he was getting out snapped by Latavius Murray anyways. Um, this is another spot where I would love to see an investment another late round pick give me give me you know that thunder to James Cook's lightning my my biggest complaint with this running back room right now is despite everything we added and the dudes that we were trying out um we still didn't really have that short yardage back and listen I I understand it's always going to be hard on third and one fourth and one to want to give the ball to anybody but Josh Allen um, I don't know about you guys, but every time we were running that tush push and Josh jumping over the pile, all that, like, I love that we have a guy that can do it. I would love if we had a running back that could take some of those hits off, off of him. Um, all kinds of things can happen in those pileups there, you know, from, you know, somebody rolling up on his ankle a shoulder goes into a knee and all of a sudden we've lost our quarterback for the rest of the season. And it was all in efforts to pick up a fourth and one and, you know, a week six game because we don't have a running back that can do it. Um, so I think there's a ton of these guys that come out in the draft every year of just kind of like a uh, thumper, get downhill, you know, get the tough yardage. And I think it's the perfect, perfect compliment to James Cook and I think you found the harder piece of the running back room to get that electric dynamic athlete that can also like Cook showed this year that he's not just a speed guy that you know you got to get to the edge and all that he was he was running between the tackles and still making people miss in the box all that um so I think that's the the tricky piece of the puzzle to figure out and, and you've done that you have him on a rookie deal for a few more years now find his compliment that you can keep around for a while. And I don't I don't want this to be a third round pick by any means. Fifth, sixth, seventh round, late round guy, and um maybe bring back Ty Johnson, bring in uh one of these one of these bargain bin free agents that we see every year. Um there's gonna be some names out there. Um what I'm really hoping that we avoid all <laughs> all off season is should the Bills draft a running back round one and, you know, every high price free agent running back um, being linked to Buffalo. Uh, the media has shown that they love to do that. Uh, it, when you look at the needs chart, when it comes, you know, when you're looking at draft stuff and all that, um, just by a numbers game, you know, running back is going to be listed as a position of need for the Bills. Um, so I'm sure we're still going to hear a whole bunch of that nonsense. Um, yeah, to give me give me a low cost veteran, um, give me a late round draft pick. The only the only situation where I would be moderately interested in spending some sort of money, um, and this is always kind of like. This is like a Madden scenario I could cook up in my head. I don't I don't see it being a real thing, whatever. If Derrick Henry wanted to come for a reasonable deal, you know, he's getting towards the end of his year. Maybe he wants to chase a ring. Um, if he was willing to do like a shared backfield with Cook and you had those two dudes that you had to game, game plan for every week, sure, give me that. But I, I just don't think the number is going to be realistic. 